Welcome to the gig, I'm Johnny O, and we do all things tech. Today I want to talk about operating systems. Your choices are Windows, or Windows, or Windows. That's basically your choices. End of segment. Okay, it is true that over 90% of desktop systems run Windows, and there's a reason for that. It's not from a monopoly. Well, it is, it's become a monopoly, I guess. But there's two ways in a fair market and market system to gain a monopoly power. And that is through market foresight or superior technology. That's, those are pretty legitimate market-based monopolies. And they might give monopoly power. Uh, Microsoft, as it seems, seems to ha has, have some sort of monopoly position. Okay, they did have a lot of market foresight. I know everyone hates them for it, and they say horrible things about them. And and uh, they were they were given this, and they were given that, and it was all railroaded. Well, it might be, but Windows is pretty good. Um, now, operating systems come from Unix. All operating systems come from Unix. It doesn't matter if it's OS X. It doesn't matter if it's Windows. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's Linux. It all comes from Unix. Uh, Unix is the grandmother and grandfather of all operating systems. Where Unix comes from is Bell Labs in the 1960s. They needed a computer system to run these new disks and tape systems. They used to use really big hard disks and these walls of tapes, walls. And they first started using Unix to control the electronic switchboards. Before the electronic switchboard, there was women wearing headsets that would pick up your call, you'd pick up your phone, tell them where you wanted to phone, and they would physically connect your call to the right, what they called uh, trunks. You would see these women in these panels, they would take these big RCA jacks, unplug them, and plug them into wherever they had to go, from, depending on where your location was. Later on in the 50s and 60s, they developed a system where these were controlled by a, a terminal. So someone hitting buttons instead of physically unplugging the big RCA jacks. They would be hitting buttons. It wasn't a computer, but it was a terminal of some sort. They would go, connecting your call now, and they would hit a button instead of unplugging. Then, in the 1970s, they developed uh, computerized switches which means an actual computer could control the swi electronic switches instead of someone pushing a button. Uh, the operating system that controlled these was Unix, and that's what it was developed for in Bell Labs in, the, in around the 1960s. Uh, they used big mainframes back then. Uh, they weren't very fast, but as soon as the CPU, the micro architecture was invented by Intel, now they could actually have computers. They had to develop the software for these computers. Software's always behind hardware. Now, in the 1970s, they started coming out with the first hard disks. And they were massive, by the way. Before this, they used tapes. And they used ticker, uh, paper ticker cards, they called them. Um, and tapes, big tapes. Now they had hard disks that was similar to a record player, but for data and they were gigantic. And they needed machine code to run these, so they needed batches of code, and they used them, and they called them disk operating systems. So now that code was introduced, not just the switching ability, and there was limited networking ability, but some networking ability in all Unix systems built in. They integrated new code to run hard disks. Microsoft got a hold of this code, and the original DOS, Disk Operating System, introduced in the IBM in 1980, for IBM in 1980, as the number one operating system, DOS 1.0, or whatever they called it, the first iteration of a Microsoft operating system, was made up of thousands of lines of Unix. In fact, all operating systems were originally made up of thousands of lines of Unix. Now, Linux is a more direct descendant of Unix in a way that Unix was ported to run on desktops. And what they called it, the, and this was in the 1980s, and early 90s they ported it. And what porting is, is when they recode it for a new architecture. 
So they recoded Unix and they called it Mini Unix. So they called it Minix. Uh, I actually had a laptop from 1990 that ran on Minix. I actually loaded Minix on it about 20 years ago. I had it running for years too. Now, I believe in 1993, a guy named Travoli took Minix and he ported it to when traditionally what, what computers would run would be Windows, Windows 3.1 and DOS. He ported it for the same x86 architecture and he called it Large Minix, where he came up with the name Linux. That's where Linux comes from. Uh, so Linux is more of a direct descendant of Unix, and a lot of your Unix commands, even from 30 years ago, will still run in Linux. Not so much with Microsoft. The idea of an operating system and the original operating system from Microsoft did come from Unix, but they went in a different direction, and I'll explain why. Um, Linux is a really old design. In fact, it, it has its roots in Unix. And Unix was designed in the 50s and 60s, a very old design on an older architecture called a risk-based architecture, reduced instruction set calculation. This basic architecture still exists today in your phone CPU. The ARM CPUs are basically risk processors. Well, the basic design. Um, the more complicated uh, architectures are on the PC CPUs and you'll find them in your Macs. Since 2003, Mac started using actual, real desktop hardware called Intel. They didn't start doing this until 2003. Before this, they ran Motorola RISC chips. Before 2003, Macs, uh, they had everyone convinced they were just as fast as PCs. They weren't. They weren't even close. Not until they, they got the new Intel chips in 2003. Now, the operating system of Windows and the operating system of Linux is much different. Now, Unix is still around and the, I would say the biggest reseller of Unix systems has been purchased by Oracle and they were called Sun Solaris. And these old email servers and, and web servers, they all ran on Unix. All of them ran on Unix. They didn't have a GUI, they didn't have a GUI, there was no Windows kind of interface, it was just command line. I know some of my friends that still work on big Unix systems. These are the systems where you'll find them today is running the stock market and this sort of thing. Um, and they have these really high paid genius type guys running them, okay? Um, so even with Linux guys, there's a certain engineering skill that must be there. Windows can be used by anyone. I have a daughter, young daughter, she can use Windows. I didn't even teach her how to use Windows, she just uses Windows, anyone can do that. That's how it's designed. Whether you're a beginner, pre-beginner, or very advanced, you can use Windows. Uh, all your Linux commands in the new, newest iterations of Windows will run. They've actually taken uh, the base code from some open source Linux and they've inserted it into the server, uh, window, latest Windows server. You can literally run Linux and Linux commands inside the Windows command line. Um, Windows have, has always had its own command line. A anything you can do in the GUI, the GUI, you can do in command line. Just most people don't know that. They just, for ease of use, they always use the GUI. Now, Windows also is designed much different. You can, you can think of Linux as a really old school design running on new hardware, whereas Windows is a very uh, newer design. Windows has its own database it runs on called the registry. And this is what slows down Windows, because what they'll say is, if you take Linux and you put it on a PC and you take the same PC and you put Windows on it, Linux runs faster. You're right, it will run faster, because there's less, less overhead, because it does a lot less. And the reason it does a lot less is because it sucks. Um, there's no DirectX, you can't really play games on it. If you play games, you have to do these advanced configurations where you have to get these config files and these special drivers from online. And even then, the hardware that's in that PC must have Linux drivers. Uh, and then you have to configure it. You have to be an engineer to get it going. Okay, it's not easy to use. There's a huge learning curve with Linux. With Windows, anyone can use it. It doesn't matter if you're an advanced computer science coder or you're a beginner. You can still use Windows.
Linux isn't for everyone. Windows is for everybody. Windows also has a more recent design. It runs on its own registry, whereas Linux is a bunch of scripts and files put together on a hard drive, somehow loosely organized as something they call an operating system because it can boot into these scripts uh, from a cold boot. Okay, great, awesome. It's still 1950s, 60s design. It still really hasn't been updated. Not really. Windows is a more modern design, and it's the way things are going. And Windows Server is very advanced, very advanced. Now, that it is true there's more overhead with Windows, but that's because it does a lot more. It doesn't matter if it's Windows Desktop or Windows Server. That Windows Desktop or that Windows Server will do a lot more than Linux. And it will, actually, the new servers will do everything Linux will do. And beginners can use Server. If you want to learn Server, you should probably learn Windows Server. Um, now, Windows Server doesn't have DirectX and all these multimedia functions like your desktop. You can't play games on a server. You can host games on a server. You can't play them. Um, that's reserved for the desktop versions of Windows. But Windows runs on the registry. The registry is what actually slows Windows down. It's not the GUI. It's not the GUI that slows Windows down. I've had an engineer say, yeah, the GUI really slows Windows down. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't, because there's Linux out there, and it has a GUI, and it still runs faster on the same hardware. That's because it doesn't run on a database. It's not a modern operating system. It's not a modern design. It was designed in the 50s and 60s when they knew very little about databases. Now, by the time the 1980s and 90s came along, when they actually designed Windows, the, the first iteration of Windows was Windows 95 and Windows NT. They designed it around a database called the Registry. Now, that's what slows Windows down. It runs on a database. It's advanced. It's a good design. Now, the only way to, to help the registry run faster and Windows run faster is to get really fast hard drives. In the future, what I think we're going to see is we're going to see parts of the registry or the entire registry being encoded onto motherboards or onto CPUs just to get rid of that overhead just to get that running faster. Once they do that, Linux has nothing. Linux has no interface and a really hard operating system to use. I have used uh, Linux back in the 90s. I haven't used it recently. I mean, I mean, when Red Hat first came out, I ran Red Hat 1.0. I used to log in to, with a, a shell account and a bash account. I used to log in remotely to systems, Unix systems and Linux systems. Uh, when I wanted to use uh, those features. One thing Linux had on, on Windows for a long time, and even Windows Server to an extent, was Linux had a lot of networking features built in. A lot of Linux has that too. Unix especially, because it was built for networking. Your layer one, your layer two, your layer three commands, they would all work in Linux. You could literally set up a software router in Linux and have it run. You could terminate, literally terminate, site-to-site uh, -site, uh, IP VPNs straight into a Linux box. You could use it as a VPN server. They'll still do those things today. Not easy to do, you gotta be uh, a pretty good user, or advanced user, almost a programmer to do it, but it can be done. It can be done. Uh, that's where Linux really has, it still kind of has an advantage on, on Windows. But there's software applications you can get in Windows that will do the same thing. Not very practical because Windows has a lot more overhead. The reason Windows has more overhead because it does more, a lot more. Uh, Linux, to be able to use it at that enterprise level, you must be an engineer. Now, the last thing I want to mention about the operating systems is Linux, if you have a company and you're going to run a Linux system and everyone's going to be on Linux and all your, your services are going to be on Linux, you're going to spend an awful lot of money on engineering. A lot of money. In fact, almost all your IT budget will go towards engineering, not hardware. Those guys are not cheap. Big Unix guys uh, that have 20 years of experience and can do anything in Linux, those guys are not cheap and all of your support will have to run through those guys. All your configurations will have to run through those guys. Um, with Windows, you can, you can throw a stone outside and hit, you, if you hit someone, he, he'll probably be a Windows guy um, or advanced Windows guy. Um, much easier to use, the engineering and support costs are much lower on Windows and Windows server systems, whereas they're much higher on Linux systems, okay? There's no licensing fee on, on Linux, but 
your support is expensive and your engineering is really expensive. Now, you pay a licensing fee with Windows and Windows products, but your support is included and your engineering is much cheaper. Okay, that's the difference. So there's a trade-off there. You're paying licensing, but you're getting a lot of support and they're much easier to use. Whereas with Linux, you're getting less support, a lot more difficult to use, no licensing fee, but you're gonna pay engineers to run those systems a lot more than you're gonna pay anyone else. Okay, I'm Johnny O. Subscriptions down below, arguments down below, questions, comments. I'll get to your questions, I'll get to your comments if I like them. If I don't, forget it. I'll just ignore you. <laughs>